Hello YouTube friends. It's Saturday morning and it's an absolutely beautiful morning. It's a little bit cold so I've put my cardigan on but I'm expecting it to warm up later and I'm going to make uh, a little video for you today. Now last week when I was stitching together the Liberty fabric to make that sort of peachy coloured um, cock quilt I was talking about my favourite things and I realised I didn't really talk much about my favourite things at all apart from Fentiman's ginger beer which I've got a bottle of here which I'm going to be having a little later um, but Liberty fabric of course is one of my favourite things but it got me thinking that you know raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens and all of that <laughs> about my favourite things so I'm going to invite you to think about yours but I, it's held down with some little stones here. I've made a little mind map of my favourite things. So I've got to talk to you about a few. I'm outside in the structure that I call my pavilion. And it's um, what this thing that I'm sitting in is. It's the base of an old greenhouse that was wooden and rotted over the years and was unsafe and dangerous with all the breaking glass and so on. So that was taken down a number of years ago and in its place I conceived of this, it's just like an enclosed space but it's not enclosed by walls or a roof, it's just described on the ground. Anyway it's got this table here and some chairs and things around and about and it's just somewhere where I can sit when it's a nice day but friends especially in these weird covid times where we can meet outdoors with family we can actually meet in this space here so i guess this is one of my favorite things but i thought i'd come out into the pavilion today so i've got a cardio on because it's a little bit cool but uh and to talk about some of the things that i really love i've got my list here and it's not a list it's like a mind map so i can go anywhere i like with this one <laughs> So where to start with this, my favourite things? Well, right beside me, I've got um, my, this box here. With some things in that I want to talk about, not that just now. There was a comment recently from somebody who said, Kate, have you ever done any weaving? And I have. Way back, maybe two years ago now, I went to Edinburgh and I did a, a weekend's weaving course with someone called James um, with on an Ashford four shed loom. And I, I've got a, a little tiny playlist to that. Now, instead of keep pointing up here and saying I'll link to these things, I'm going to do some links in the description below. And also on the end card at the very end of this, as uh, YouTube gives me the chance to put an end card. And I'm going to put some suggested playlists in there as well uh, so that you can see... Um, Oh, hello. Hello, can you keep walking? Thank you. So I've got the back door open, so the cats will be in and out this morning. That was Cat Rita. So I did some weaving and I made this little thing. So after that comment, it got me thinking, where is that little piece of weaving? So I went on the hunt for it and here is this little scarf that I made. And I made it these colours because it goes with that coat that I like. Uh, which a lot of people think I made. I didn't make it. Uh, I, it was an impulse buy from the internet, like you do. And um, these were the co these colours do fit in very well with it. But I realised that I wasn't wearing it, so I went to seek it out and find it. And imagine my dismay when I discovered that. I mean, one of the th things that's definitely not my favourite things is the moth problem that I have. <laughs> so you know what I'm going to say, don't you? Look. It's been mothed in uh, two or three places, uh, which is disappointing because, confession time, I'm not a darner. I'm not a darner. I can't darn very well. However, I brought my needles out, my, you know, my big tapestry needles out, and I've got my big box of wools here. And I haven't got any wool that would actually match in with this. That would have been great, wouldn't it? To have brought a bit of that home with me. But I've got this other stuff here that doesn't go. <laughs> but so when you mend something, there's two things. 
you can do an invisible mend, which I'm never likely to manage. <laughs> you can do an invisible mend or you can do a visible mend, a mend that's meant to be seen, a mend that's all about um, the um, Japanese have got a word for it with pottery, where they mend pottery with beautiful gold uh, along the crack of the pottery. It's called kintsuki or kintsuki, something like that. Well, mending and darning is a massive thing on YouTube and Instagram. There are whole mending communities out there that I know nothing about. So I've watched a few darning videos and I might, while I'm sitting here talking to you, have a little try at mending some of these holes. And because I haven't got matching thread, it is going to have to be darns that are visible. So I could, uh, so I've got my, I've got my wool here. In fact, I'll take, I'll just take that out because I want to talk about that in a minute as well. So I'll pop that there and I've got all my little scraps and bits of wool. And a lot of this is sock yarn, which might work because this, this is about the weight of sock yarn. Anyway, so weaving, I, yes, I've tried weaving and I think I tried that weaving course because I was trying to decide whether I wanted to buy a small table loom. At the end of the weekend, I definitely didn't want to buy a small table loom. <laughs> I love the, the, I love the effect of it. I love how it looks and I really liked the process, but I drove away from that weekend thinking it's beautiful, but life's too short to do everything. So weaving's not going to be something that comes to the last homely house. <laughs> So, um, but I might have a go at mending that. If I do do some darns, I'll show you them at the end. <laughs> look, I've got this kind of colour. That would look terrible, wouldn't it? Even I know that. But I have got, I have got some stuff that would fit better in here. So, darning might be happening this weekend. Who knows? So yeah, so the weaving playlist, I'll put it on the end. Having this big box of wool out here though, this is all my scraps and bits of wool. I want to show you how far I've got with my mitered square blanket. I'll do it that way around. Uh, just a minute, it's attached here, so it's probably best that I hold it here, isn't it? Because these are live stitches. There we go. So there are four completed runs, and this square here will complete the fifth run. So there are five runs altogether, and I think it's still 11 long. I haven't put any more on the end, but I could easily. And this is how it's looking. How's your mitered square blanket coming along? Because quite a lot of you are making them, I know, from the comments below. It's such a good way of using up scraps of fabric, um, bits of old sock yarn, just bits of leftovers. And it's so easy. I think I've mentioned that before. I've linked many times to where I got this pattern from, the knitting squirrel. But you know, you can get, you can find mitered square or double decrease anywhere on Pinterest, on Instagram, uh, or, or just on the general search. So I'm loving how this is looking. I'm really enjoying how it's coming together. See live stitches. I've just dropped them all off the end here. Live stitches, Kate. Right. Okay. Let's just put that away. So the things that I might do while I'm sitting out in the pavilion, they're moving sheep at the moment. There's a lot of noise going on because it's a busy time on the farm for lambing. And uh, the, so the, the people who are involved with the lambing are shifting sheep. We haven't got any lambs yet, but they're shifting sheep around. Anyway, that's a couple of things I've got that I might do out here. I might knit a bit more on my mitered square blanket and I might um, darn on my old scarf a uh, bit of weaving. But I also might do some stitching on that uh, Liberty cock quilt that I made last week because that hasn't got any further. I've pinned it out but it hasn't got any further forward yet. Okay, colour. I think we, we don't need to go any further than just looking at this stuff to know that I absolutely adore colour. Um, it's I think a life without beautiful colours and combinations of colours would be a very sad life indeed and I really like startling colours like pink and orange and uh, those kinds of things and the colours of hot countries uh, you know, um, when I was in India particularly, I remember. Oh, here's Sadie. She might be coming to say hello. She's my outdoorsy cat. Are you coming up, Sadie? No. Um, 
yeah, all those colours of India uh, when I, I visited there a few years ago, uh, about 10 years ago with my daughter. And you know, the, col the, the colours just knock you out. You're coming up. Come and say hello. So this is the cat that mostly follows me around outside. This is Sadie, which actually brings me on to one of the things that's on the list, because of course, one of my favourite things is my cats. I've actually written on the list, on the thing, Norma, but then the other cats I added very, very quickly. I do love my cats, I really do. And I, I like just letting them be, just letting them just be whatever, wherever they are. I don't really fuss on with them too much. Um, yeah, so they're great, my cats are great. What was I talking about, colour, yeah. Colour. I mean, I think I'm famous for being uh, for liking pink and green. That's yeah. But I also like lots of other colours as well, and colour combinations particularly. And so fabric designers who put those colours together really well, like you know, by uh, you won't be surprised to hear that Kay Fassette is my favourite fabric designer because he just has that intuitive way of putting colours together that uh, that make them zing. I love. I just love that. I really do. Uh, I got a new order of uh, fabric yesterday and that's an, okay. That's one of my favorite things, <laughs> getting my hands on a bit of new fabric. This is for um, not the quilt I'm making at the moment, but the one after. I've got the fabric for that one now. I'm very excited about that one. <laughs> it's great. So it's, uh, are you thinking about your favorite things? Are you? I hope so. Because here on this list there's kind of a theme developing but it's it says here being busy with my hands one of my favorite things is being busy with my hands and making and so all the little projects that i've got in boxes around the house and agnes's hexagon quilt and um just lots and lots of boxes full of half made projects i don't mind how long they stay half made for you know and i think it's I really believe that it's a lot of this is about process rather than product. I, f I feel that strongly that the, the, it's actually the, the steps. So hand quilting, for instance, people say, oh, it takes such a long time. That's the point. <laughs> That's the point. It takes a long time. And so um, I don't I honestly I I get excited by the idea of having a massive quilt to, to hand quilt. And that leads me on to another of this, this list here, because when I'm doing that on my big table, I've got my uh, soundtrack music or good movies. And you'll have heard me say hundreds of times, this is a good thing to do while you're watching TV or you've got a film on or whatever. It's not that I watch uh, huge numbers, numbers of hours of television. It's just that I have this stuff on in the background. It's almost like the radio with pictures. <laughs> That's exactly what it's like. So I have my favourite films or TV series that I watch and I can watch them many times over because I think that um, the, the skill that goes into making a good movie um, or um, a good TV show, you don't just want to watch it once and throw it over your shoulder and never look at it again. I think that you see different things all the time. So I never mind watching things over and over again. Soundtracks and the soundtracks to these things, the time and effort that goes into creating the music around a really good movie is often discarded. People don't, you know, you don't usually comment, you, you comment on the acting or the story or the suspense or the drama. But actually, if you imagine the music as another character, so I absolutely love soundtrack music and my, my computer's playlists are full of soundtracks. Yeah. Now, I've just looked around here. The hens are just down there in the hen shed and in the hen run. You might be able to hear Eileen. And there's one brown hen that every single day gets out of the hen run. This happens to me every year. Before I get my garden set, and there's no, I'm nowhere near getting the garden set yet because it's a bit too early and cold yet. But there's a brown hen over there who's out of the hen run. I don't know how they do it because the rest of them aren't out. <laughs> but that does bring me on to another thing it's on my list. It says, 
one of my favourite things. It should be in the Julie Andrews song, this, but I don't know how you'd fit it in. Watching hens. I could sit and watch hens for hours. I sometimes do. And it, this goes back to when I was little and we always had hens. And my dad was a great um, lover of poultry, which is obviously where I get it from. And I remember one place we lived. It's quite complicated, the setup for this story. But he, he, was, uh, he kept his hens. Um, it was a huge, enormous um, training centre that he worked at. He was teaching and he was, there was a big training centre and there was loads of buildings and outbuildings. And at the far end of this huge um, place, there was uh, some not quite derelict, but unused buildings. And he had one of them with hens in. And so we'd go to work and he'd work and he'd work and then he'd pop and see to the hens, collect the eggs, all of that. And nobody was really that aware of it. And a bit like me, I mean, I'm a lot like dad and a bit like me, dad really didn't really like big social gatherings where you've got to dress up and and make small talk with people that you don't know very well. Come up, say hello. Uh, and so this one night um, he was telling me about it the next day. Why did I do that? This one night, there was a function on at the training centre where he works. Probably, I don't know what it was. And when he dressed in all of his uniform, he looked incredibly smart. Really, I mean, just like, don't mess with this guy. <laughs> and so there he was, all dressed up in his uniform at this party. And he did, you know, the round, said hello to everybody. He just told me this later. Of course I wasn't there. I was only about 10. And then when he deemed that it was OK to disappear, he just went off, walked up to this, this little hut and just sat on an upturned bucket and watched the hens while all this glittering party was going on a, a few hundred yards away. I love that story because that's exactly what I would do. <laughs> so watching hens, he would just sat and watch, and watch the hens. That's exactly what I would have done. Hens are fascinating things, fairly stupid. Not, it's a lot of instinct. Hens have got a lot of instinct. I love all that. So watching hens, and as we're talking about poultry, one of my favourite things is taking that silly goose to the side of the dam for a swim. Which I have, I've, I've, she's had her first swim of the year. Martha and Agnes, my daughter and my granddaughter visited. And Agnes is obsessed with the goose, obsessed. And so I caught the, Eileen and we went up to the side of the dam and gave her a swim. And Agnes was like, eyes on stalks, looking at this, uh, this spectacle. First swim of the year. Uh, Eileen at the moment, I'll give her another swim soon, but the lifting of the COVID restrictions has meant that the fishermen are back now. So I have to do it later in the evening when they've gone. But I was looking at her on that first swim and her feathers were looking really, you know, end of winter feathers and what, all poultry do and what's most spectacular to see in her is that she looks terrible all ugly duckling and terrible but then she grows her new feathers in which she's doing right now i mean she's she's th those feathers are busy growing back now and in a couple of weeks time she's going to look magnificent again so taking eileen for a swim is definitely on the list of things i love doing but being busy with my hands having some knitting or stitching or something on the go with my hands um, you know, basting a couple of hexagons together while I'm, you know, in an evening before I go to bed. I never, I'm never not doing that. And I know that all of you guys down on the sofa, you're all doing the same thing, aren't you? So there's my lime green sofa where all my subscribers are sitting as far as you can go that way. And as far as you can go that way. What shall I, shall I tell you what, I'll get a crate of Fentimans and send it down. Keep passing it on. Let's look at what else I've got on my mind map here. I should tick them off, shouldn't I, when I've done them. So soundtracks and movies, I've talked about that. Being busy with my hands. And then next to that, I've written learning new things. Now, here I am in my mid sixties. You're never too old to learn something new. I think I learn things all the time. Currently, what I've learned is after a lot of watching different YouTube videos and trial and error with Anna is that the microphone 
that you can't even see it, it's down here, the microphone is going to cut down the wind noise of this video. We've nailed them. We've nailed the sound, I think. I hope. I really hope we have. So that was a big steep learning curve because trying to film outdoors without being drowned out by loud wind noises, especially living here in the north of England. Uh, so it, it actually has limited how much I feel like I can film outdoors. Well, we've got a new... Um, it's not a new setup, it's the same setup, but we've got a different way of using it, which I think works. I hope so. I hope you think that, think it works. Okay, let's travel on around this mind map then. This is one I wrote down when I was making this stream of consciousness. Waking up to a day full of nothing. I love waking up in the morning and thinking, what, what day is it today? It's this day. What am I doing today? Nothing. And having spent years and years and years waking up to an alarm and driving off to a job and working 13 hours and driving home again and everything that goes with that, waking up in the morning now and knowing that nobody needs me to do anything, I can do whatever I choose. I can't even tell you how, what a lovely feeling that is. That doesn't mean that there are some days where there's plenty to do and there's a, a load of um, commitments and things I need to get on with. There's cats roaming all over the place here. Except Norma, she's asleep in that box of liberty. <laughs> so that's a lovely, that's definitely one of my favorite things. Not having a schedule. Hiya. Cat off, off the camera here. I won't invite her up again. She'll just shove her bottom in the camera, won't she? So think about that one for a few moments. Isn't it a nice idea that, you know, not all the time, just sometimes it's just nice to know that you've got some free time. Definitely one of my favourite things. So I'm sitting outside here in the pavilion uh, the garden's a proper mess. Uh, some weeding's been done, mostly by uh, my kids came and helped me, not last Sunday, but the Sunday before. And that was good. We had a, a, a whole day, we had a bit of a bonfire and we tidied up some of the rubbish in the garden. But there is still a huge amount to do, lots to do. And so, um, Especially I've got to weed through the polytunnel and get things ready to put in there because otherwise I won't have cucumbers and tomatoes and the things that I like to grow. But what I've written here, and this is one of my absolute favourite things. There's, I am amazed that anything I plant actually grows. Amazed. I stick this little seed in a pot or this little bulb in the ground. Ugh. That's, it grows for other people, but it won't grow for me. And it does. I can grow cucumbers. I can grow lettuce. I can grow carrots. Always oh, absolutely amazes me. Every year, even though I've been doing it for years and years. <laughs> absolutely amazes me. I'm not knitting, am I? All this time I could have been knitting and I'm not. Being busy with my hands. Well, I can't knit if I haven't got the other knitting needle, can I? Let's keep on going through this list. So, as I'm talking about the garden then and being amazed that anything actually grows, I've written spring because I think that's because it is spring. Because if it had been autumn, I'd have said that too. So I guess the answer to that one is whatever season I'm in is the one I like. Just a minute, let me get myself sorted out here. There we go. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, how have I got this far without talking about this favourite thing? This should have been number one on the list. My family. And especially my beautiful granddaughter, Agnes, who's 18 months old now. Now, just to get back to the knitting a second, I'm not a continental knitter like Arne and Carlos. I'm a thrower. 
We've talked about this before. It's how I was taught. I can't do anything about it now. So please don't mind. Anyway, my kids. I'm very fortunate that all my kids are back in the UK now because my son and his wife were living in Canada for a, a year and they're back in uh, uh, England now. Uh, and two of my kids and their partners live pretty close by and um, the other lives in London, which means that I get to visit London sometimes. We'll go to London when all this lockdown's lifted a bit and we'll have a little wander around London with, uh, with my son and his wife. That will be a good, a good one, won't it? We'll do that. But I'm so fortunate to have, uh, to have um, creative kids and um, happy kids and kids who are really, really keen to support me. Um, yeah, I am lucky. I know I am. I know that. Yeah, I know I am. I won't. I don't need to go on about that anymore. <laughs> My kids are awesome. They're really awesome. And so speaking of people, then I've got on this list here my creative friends, and I know a lot of people who make things, who are creative people, or make music or art. That's a blessing, isn't it? I know a lot of people uh, local to me who uh, who are very very um, creative. It's lovely. I love that. So we're getting near to the end of this list. It's not an exhaust. Excuse me, bubbles. It's not an exhaustive list. Definitely not. Um, my bees, I've got written here, and I can see my bees from where I'm sitting. Uh, I have just one colony of bees that made it through the winter in this top bar hive here, which is just behind the camera. And it's a nice day today, so they're going in and out like crazy, looking for uh, pollen and uh, nectar to bring back into the hive. So I love my bees. The bees was um, part of the challenge that I, I made to myself in my 60th year. I challenged myself to do all sorts of new things. One of them was pottery, which I still love doing, but it's not been that possible in this last year from hell. Uh, and then uh, one of them was uh, one of them was spinning. And when I turned the camera on for the very, very first time, uh, nearly f four years ago in September, I was actually sitting in this pavilion. I was sitting right there with my spinning wheel, spinning. And um, I love my spinning wheel. I haven't had the opportunity to get it out and do much spinning lately because it does take quite a bit of setting up and takes up a lot of room. Two things I haven't got much of at the moment, time and room. And so uh, I will get this, maybe, I don't know, for our fourth anniversary here at the last homely house. Shall I get the spinning wheel out and sit in September and do a bit of spinning? <laughs> See how far we've come. <laughs> I was talking to a friend the other day on FaceTime who wants to start a YouTube channel. And she was asking me, you know, she's thinking about it. And she was asking me what, um, you know, where, for just bits of tips and so on. And I was remembering back to that video way, way back. I'm not linking to that. You have to find that one on your own. <laughs> and it was very, very basic indeed. I think things have got a little better since then. But um, <laughs> yeah, I still chat on as much as I ever used to do. So yeah, it was interesting reflecting with my friend about the things that I do differently now that I make these videos for you because that brings me on to the the thing that I've written in the corner my favorite things my youtube friends you guys <laughs> so you're you're some of my favorite things as well <laughs> have i just decreased there i was supposed to decrease yes i did i just wondered if i'd forgotten because i'm chatting no i haven't so i'm going to just check around this list now and see if there's anything else to talk about there's the, I'm going to save this one to the last because um, that's pretty much everything I've got on the list, but it's not everything that I've got in my heart as my favourite things. It says here uh, in the corner uh, that one of my favourite things is, is that the miracle of being alive at all and taking joy in life. But there's this last one here I want to talk about. And my son, my middle son, John, and his wife, Anna, Anna helps me a lot here. 
and John too, because, oh, hiya, is he coming up? <laughs> so John uh, helps, helps me by, he makes um, a video for the patrons once a month. Uh, over on the Patreon channel. Again, I always leave the link to that either on the end screen or on the uh, in the description below. And he makes uh, one video on a Friday and, and it was yesterday. It was today Saturday. And um, I'm going to put a, a little bit because this last thing that I've got on my list here, it says the seaside. And so Anna and John were on holiday last week up the Northumberland coast, which is the most beautiful coastline. It really is. And Anna took this video of John. His John, John has many passions in life. One of them is bird watching, and he loves to go to places where he might see uh, some interesting birds. He's got a telescope and some binoculars, all of that. And so he made a film for the patrons all about that. But Anna and Anna took the the uh, film. And so I've written one of my favorite things here is the seaside and I've watched. So I only saw the video that Anna made for the patrons yesterday, the same as everybody else. I've watched it about five times. I'm absolutely blown away by it. And so I'm going to put a little bit of film of um, Holy Island and the, and the sea in here to finish up with, because honestly, I, I was so staggered by the quality and the beauty of that film and the music all of that so thank you Anna and thank you John for doing that uh, that's um, a kind of roundup of my favorite things I might stay here now and do the darning S sitting outside in the sun's really nice and I have pretty much gone through this list of favorite things but there are many more. I could do this video over and over again. So at the end screen, on the end screen, then I'm going to put the playlist to the weaving that I did. And um, I can't think what else, but I'll put some other interesting things in there that you may want to click on and have a look at some other videos. And um, down in the description below, there's always a link to my shop where you can read the books that I've written about this place. I've written a fair few little books, they're just little, about the cats. Uh, Norma's got her own book, Sadie's got her own book, and poor Prudence. Rita and Prudence have their own book. Eileen has her own book. <laughs> the Garden has its own book. And they're just little books and you can buy them singly or uh, there's some other ones, a quilting project and a story about a, a time in my life that I, I write about. Um, and um, there are seven of them all together and you can buy them in a bundle of seven or you can get them one at a time. And there's cards too, which are photographs of things around and about. Um, so the link to the shops though is in the description below. The link to Patreon's in the description as well, because the new Along has started. And I, I enjoy all the Alongs, I really do. But this one is mostly about hand stitching. So I'm in heaven absolute heaven. So I've been rabbiting on about my favourite things for a long time. What I'm going to invite you to do is think about what your favourite things are and stick a comment below uh, on the lime green sofa. <laughs> Subscribe first of all because that, that reserves your spot on the sofa and click the notifications bell. Uh, settle down, have a chat with your neighbour uh, the ginger beer is coming down one way and I think um, Cadbury's chocolate fingers are going down the other way. <laughs> I do love my sofa. And so um, think about your favourite things. Pop something down in the comments below for me to see, but also for everyone else to see so that we can see if there's a consensus about. I'm guessing there'll be plenty of crafts down there. I think so. Yeah. And um, <laughs> yeah, so do all those subscribe likey things because that really helps. Have you seen how the channel's growing? It's rather amazing, isn't it? I'm very, very pleased to have so many of you here. Uh, it's uh, it's marvellous for me to know that uh, so many people are enjoying what goes on here at the Last Homely House. I love it. 
And so you guys take care. Um, I, I, I'll somehow work out how to share this with you. My little list. <laughs> I don't think I've missed anything off. Nope. And I'll see you next week because next week uh, is the monthly shop update. And uh, Anna and I will be making a video about that to tell you what's coming up there. The um, shop update, I do um, a prize draw from everyone who's on the mailing list and send that month's shop update, plus another couple of bits and pieces, to that person, whoever wins, and we do a random number on the numbers that are on the mailing list, because the mailing list is, is growing as well, which is lovely. So if you want to be in with a chance of winning next month's, this month's product, which will be in the shops next week, they're in the shops, Kate, in the shop. No, we're not going, we're not going international with this. We're just going, uh, okay. <laughs> So if you want to be in with a chance of the winning the prize draw, which is the shop product, then jo just join the mailing list. It's just one mailing a month that we send you about the, and you also get to hear when the new products go live. Uh, yeah. And also patrons uh, from a, one tier up, they get 24 hour access to the shop beforehand, which I've not yet managed. I've only managed to make that work once patrons, but I'm confident we'll be able to make, to make it manage next week. So look out for that announcement. I hope so. I'm going to get some help. <laughs> Learning new things all the time. All the time. So today then, beautiful day. Enjoy whatever you're doing. Tell me what your, maybe your top two, three favourite things are. And uh, we'll get that conversation going on the sofa. You can sing the song in your head if you like. I am. <laughs> Take care, everyone, and see you next week.